Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again today. We're going to do a little bit more work on Mega Tank, but progress has been hindered somewhat by any number of stupidly named storms this week. So we've had a little bit of a flooding issue. I'll, I'll show you some footage I shot earlier on when it was light because it's dark outside now. So in the past few days we've had three storms, um, Dudley, Eunice and something else, but basically loads and loads of water. We've got um, our houses at the top of a hill, but at the very top of the hill is a load of parkland. It's the Wadsley Common, and all that water has to go somewhere, so it's decided to come through our garden and up through the garage floor. So that's always fun. And then trickling through this hole here, which is fine. It's just where all the electricity and all the services come in. And then out through the driveway. So we've got some drainage issues to sort out but more importantly it's made everything in the garage a bit soggy which it's not really what you want i guess so with all that being said it's starting to dry off in here i've got everything kind of propped up just to keep it dry we'll need to come up with a waterproofing solution for the bottom of the stand but in the last video on mega tank we built the stand it's here we've got some um of the bracing done for the walls the sides the back and the front of the tank which I've built, which is basically just little tiny stud walls. And the idea is basically I'll get them in place, all screwed in, and we'll get the basic outline of the tank done, the framing if you like, uh, and then we need to think about waterproofing after that. So everything so far has been pretty straightforward. It's just a case of screwing bits of wood together. I have to say at the outset, I'm not a professional. I've never done this before. I've never built anything on this scale before. So it's all new to me. We will find out whether or not I'm doing the right thing in the weeks and months to come. But so far, I've got a plan at least. I'm very heavily influenced by other people I've seen do this. So this is none of this is my idea. I'm kind of taking inspiration from other channels, copying. Kind of design that I'm going for is most closely aligned to another channel I've started watching recently, Aquarium Domain. Um, he's built lots of big, massive, massive tanks. I'm kind of follow loosely following that kind of design. Um, so you might see some parallels there. I don't know what I'm doing, as I keep saying, so I'm just doing it and hoping that it works. So let's get on with it and start putting these walls up. Before we do that, oh, the snake heads are out. So I thought I'd show you them. They're one of my latest additions to the fish room. I've always wanted snake heads. They are super cool, if super hidey. You don't see much of them. I've just put in a little bit of live food for them. So that's why they're out and about. But there's one of them there. Hopefully got a male and a female in here. But yeah, like I say, super elusive, super hidey. They're taking their time settling into this tank. Um, I've given them lots of cover, given them a few floating plants, very secure lids. But even, even though I don't see them often, they are still super cool. Might as well show you these guys while we're here. This is the Congo Tetras. If you've joined me on any of my live streams recently, you know I've been running a thing where we're going to build a subscriber tank. Uh, and in last week's live stream, we picked the inhabitants. And it's going to be these guys. The tank's going to be based around these. So, pop along to the next live stream. We're going to choose what type of tank we're going to keep them in. What kind of setup we're going to do. But whatever it is, it's going to be pretty cool, I think. These guys look awesome. Don't know how well it's coming across in the camera, but the iridescence on them is just it's fabulous. So, starting to look a little bit more like a tank now. I've got the framing up. Um, my main concern with this, just with every part of the build, is just making sure everything's square. So, I've been starting one screw, uh, or as few screws as possible, just to hold things in place, checking, and then with each additional screw I put in, checking again, making sure everything's square. So, looking good so far. Everything's up, everything's working, everything's square still, everything fits. I haven't had to cut too many things twice. Um, so it's just a case now of piling on the screws. Um, obviously this bit, this will all be plied. So I need to add in some more braces so as I've got something to attach the plywood to. I've gone with 18mm ply. So this is an 18mm ply on the bottom 
uh, the, the stand has a 12mm ply on the top so that's kind of doubled up and then it'll be 18mm ply all the way around and this is where I've got a question to ask. So if you have done this sort of thing before, the perceived wisdom seems to be for waterproofing that you fiberglass the, the edges, so where the ply meets, where there's seams, fiberglass all that in, and then use something like pond armor, pond shield. But it's just so expensive at the moment. I mean, everything's expensive at the moment. This is not the time to start building a wooden tank because timber is just ridiculous at the moment. Um, I will be doing a full write-up of all the costs. I've been keeping all the receipts, so we'll get that at the end of the build. But I've been looking at liquid rubber. So liquid rubber is a product um, which I've seen some people use in the past and had mixed reviews. But it seems like it will fit the bill for me. And they also do this liquid rubber seam tape that can negate the fiberglassing stage. So for the moment, that's my plan. I've had a few emails back and forth with the people that make it to take look I'm building a wooden aquarium I, my plan is to use this will it work what's the longevity I can expect so I've had a few back and forth for them and been given the the okay and obviously they would say that given that they make it but it seems like it will work it seems like it'll work out a lot cheaper as well I, I don't want to be driven by cost because cheap isn't necessarily the best way to do this but if it does the job I don't want to pay over the odds for nothing and to cover an area this size with pond armor it's like it's 80 quid a pack at least and i'm going to need a bazillion packs of it whereas i can get the big massive um things of liquid rubber a lot cheaper than that and it should do the same sort of thing um it's rated for this people have done it in the past the manufacturer says it will work we can but try so if you're planning on following along and making your own build let's give it a few months after i finish just to make sure that this is actually going to work but if you have first-hand experience, uh, by all means, get in touch. Let me know in the comments. Send me an email saying, no, don't do that. It's ridiculous. It doesn't work. It's all a scam. Or conversely, if it has worked for you, let me know. Um, if there's a better way to do this that isn't going to break the bank, I'm all ears. Like I say, I've not done this before. This is very much um, trial and error. I can flood this place. So if it does burst a, a seam, um, I'm not in the main house, I've not got a floor underneath me. Um, this is the place to have a leak if it's going to have a leak. So I think it's worth a shot at least. Um, but yes, so with that, let's get back and put up a few more timbers. So that's the framing just about done. I mean, there's a couple more screws to put in, a couple more boards to lay. But it's in, it's pretty solid. Um, it's not going anywhere, I'd like to say. The next stage is going to be plywood, but I really need a bit of a dry day to do that because I need to cut up some plywood sheets, so I need to do that outside, so I've just not got enough space in here. But lessons learned so far, you need more screws than you think you're going to need. So I'm now on box, so these packs of 100, I'm now on box 4 or 5 possibly, just to get to this point. Um, I probably don't need that many screws, but you know, Better safe than sorry and all that kind of stuff. So, like I say, plywood next. After plywood, we've got um, waterproofing. So I'm thinking about using the, the liquid rubber stuff that I talked about earlier. Um, the next, I want to use glass, a glass panel. To This is going to be the viewing panel here. So at the moment, it's roughly seven foot by two and a half foot. Um, and I've been getting some quotes for glass and it's not cheap everything's everything's not cheap timber is way more expensive than it was a year ago and that's even more expensive than it was a year before that so i've been looking at plain glass manufacturers um, aquarium manufacturers koi pond window installation places and the prices are wide and varied let's put it that way so koi pond windows tend to be like laminated glass so two sheets of 10 mil glass kind of glued together and um, that seems to be the cheapest option so far and um, other than that i mean i'm getting quotes up to like eight nine hundred pounds for a bit of glass this size so i might be looking at splitting this and putting in a pole here or a post here and having two smaller pieces of glass that i could possibly take from a, a second hand aquarium if i break that down and use the front and the back panels to make two panels here um, we have suggestions of using like glass dining tables, things like that, but I've not seen any that are big enough and I'm not sure I do want to go down that road. But yeah, the costs are piling up, but it'll be interesting to see. So 
whatever solution we come up with. Next we've got plywood, then we've got liquid rubbering. Uh, I have seen people concerned about using liquid rubbers because it says on the thing that it doesn't bond to silicon. Uh, having spoken to them, it, silicon bonds to it rather than it doesn't bond to silicon. So what they're saying is you can't put liquid rubber on top of silicon, but you can put silicon on top of cured liquid rubber, which makes sense. So I can still use silicon to fix it, fix the glass panel. Uh, and then well, away we go. So as always, click that subscribe button if you haven't already. You can follow along in the journey and figure out what mistakes I'm going to make next. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas, concerns, thoughts in general. Join me on a Friday, Friday night, 9 p.m. UK time. We do the live stream every Friday. You can join me there, ask me in real time uh, for updates and follow along. But most importantly, click that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.